Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Happy belated Halloween. Happy early Thanksgiving. Happy, oh man, it is the end of 2023. Where is time going? Oh my gosh. And welcome to the latest edition of the Pixel Mill webinar series. We're so happy to have y'all here today, guys. And today's session is all about the robots taking over AI and action, create self help agents in Microsoft Teams with Power Virtual Agents. This has been a really cool piece to, to learn about. Um, amongst the many cool things that have happened uh, in our world here, one of the things is I've gotten the chance to learn more about the Power Platform and all that goes into that. And one of the really cool things is Power Virtual Agents and all the stuff that goes into that. And uh, I'm excited that it's going to be finally part of our webinar series Rolodex of sessions that we have as uh, that we have available to you all. Um, as always, my name is Michael Wells. I am the Customer Success Manager here at Creo Spark, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all here today. We've got a jam-packed session, so I'm going to move along through everything and, uh, and and whatnot. So let's get to that agenda for the day. we got a few things we're going to go through. we got some introductions and some housekeeping that I'll go through in just a bit. We're going to do an overview of just what the heck PDAs are and, and go through all that. We'll talk about some practical use cases. We'll go through some demos, of course. That's the part you all are going to want to see. And then, of course, we try to save some time at the end for some Q&A and all that. So that's kind of our, our goal for the day. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, so let's quick get to that housekeeping first. First and foremost, if you've got questions, ask them away. We want to make sure we get your questions answered. You're here for a reason. Uh, we want to make sure we're getting your questions answered. So if you've got them, a couple ways to do it. There is a questions tab. Uh, if you are on the desktop version of GoToWebinar, there should be a pop-out that you can put your questions in. If you're on the browser version, there's going to be a little chat bubble with a question mark. That's going to that's gonna be where you're going to put your questions there. Throw your questions on up in there. I'll be following along in the background as we're going through today's session, and we'll make sure we get to your questions. If we don't, we'll make sure we get to them at the end, if we can't get to them in the moment. Uh, next, we'll have a resource handout at the end, so keep an eye out for that. I'll talk about that again at the end of the session when we get there. And then we do record our sessions, and those will be available to, available to all of you all um, probably middle of next week uh, when that goes out. And then we'll also have a survey that we'll talk about at the end. We'd love to get your feedback. We are a culture of constant improvement here at Pixma Webinar Series HQ, and we want to make sure we're always giving you guys the best product possible. So uh, if we would appreciate your feedback. Next slide, please. All right. So uh, in case this is, this is your first time, or even if it's your like 37th and a half time, let me just tell you a little bit about us. Uh, we, this is the Pixma Webinar Series brought to you by the fine folks at Creo Spark. And our goal here, uh, you know, we work all in and around the Microsoft universe, touching every corner, breadcrumb, puzzle piece that Microsoft has to offer. And it's all in pursuit of the ideal digital employee experience. We want to make sure that whatever you're using, however you're using it, is the best fit for you and you're getting the most out of it. We do from a couple different locations. Um, first, we've got our location, as always, in Davis, California, about 20 minutes south of our state capital, Sacramento. That's where I'm coming from today. It's more or less where our speaker's coming from today. Uh, he is our Microsoft nice Regional Director, so he's in this part of town. We've got uh, some of our custom SharePoint team here as well. And then we've got our other main headquarters in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We've got another Microsoft MVP there as well. We've got our multi a lot of multidisciplinary team members there working in our modern uh, work uh, space, our process transformation space, our secure cloud space. Um, just a lot of stuff. We're covering all, covering all of North America. Or I should say, as soon as I can convince our, my bosses to put in a, an office in Mexico, we'll, we'll cover all of North America. But then you'll never see me again. I'll just be on the beach. That's where I'll be. A little bit about us and what we do here. We're happy to have you here uh, for another edition of the Pixel webinar series. You go to the next slide, please. And as always, we like to kick it off with a poll. We like to just get an idea of uh, what's going on in your head. You obviously came to this session for a reason. You saw the title. You saw the topic. You saw something. And you went, hmm, hold on a second. That sounds like that would be a lot of fun to learn about, or I want to know more, or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll. You're going to see it popping up here on the screen. What is your experience with Power Virtual Agents? I built and deployed one that is in use. I built one, but it's not in use. I've interacted with one. I have no experience with PVAs, or oh my gosh, are the robots taking over? Um, let us know what you think. I'm seeing some votes come in already. Uh, very interesting to see those come in. Thank you, everyone who's who's voted so far. Seeing them come in, appreciate that. Um, now, what is your experience with TVAs? You know, have you have you gotten to dive in? Are you still scared of uh, of technology? Are you uh, have you seen them floating around your org maybe, and you're like, oh, no, it's cool. I maybe I should learn a little, learn a little bit more about that. Uh, about five, seven more seconds to get your votes in, guys, and then we'll uh, we'll share the results with you. There, uh, a lot of cool, a lot of interesting, actually some interesting results coming in there. Uh, all right, I'm going to close that out, and then let me share this out with you guys. So, 11% of you said I built and deployed one that is in use. 22% said I built one, but it's not in use. 44% of you said I've interacted with one. 
22% said they have no experience with PVAs, and thankfully nobody is scared that the robots are taking over. Uh, hopefully we have plenty of time until that happens. But very interesting, a very wide range of um, experiences with PVAs, but excited to see that at least a lot of you have interacted with one, you're used to one, you're used to seeing what a chatbot looks like. We love to hear that. All right, let me get that hidden there. Okay, so now that we've done that, I've talked enough. Let's get into the, the main part of the session. Let's introduce your speaker for today. He is the second most familiar face in, in Pixel webinar series history behind my own, um, only because I'm gover government mandated to be here. They, 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 they pay the company to let me do these. Um, he is a Microsoft MVP. He's a Microsoft Regional Director. He's our Chief Product Officer here at CreoSpark. And he is my opponent this week in our company Fantasy Football League. He is the one, <laughs> he is the only, Mr. Eric Overfield. Eric. How you doing today, boss? <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for uh, thanks. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Um, you hear oh, me yeah. just fine. We gotta make sure my audio is good. You look and you sound great, boss. Excellent. Last I checked, I was still uh, one out of ten in our fantasy league, so I'm looking forward to this week as well. You are you oh. are the current leader, so we'll see how it goes. For me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, it's been a couple months since I've been able to host one of these. Um, it's exciting to be back. I've been busy doing lots of things and we have a wonderful team and it's been uh, wonderful to be able to share this space with um, all of our different experts. So um, yeah, but thank you all for joining me. Okay, so what's important here? Chatbots, there's a lot going on in this space. Um, we actually host a lot of uh, PBAs in a day as well. If you're interested in learning more about like how to set one up and you really want to get your hands dirty, uh, do talk, reach out to us, reach out to Michael, we can help look you up. But I thought it'd be really important. We thought it'd be really important to give just that that hour overview. Also, there's just a lot of happening in this space around generative AI, around GPT, around chat GPT. You've heard these things. There's questions about, well, why aren't we getting that in PBAs? And, and here it is right now, if you're live with us or if you listen to a recording, excuse me, uh, we're doing, we're presenting this here in the beginning of November, 2023, and Microsoft Ignite 2023 is just about to happen. And there might be some interesting um, excitements coming out of that. And I, of course, I can't share you what's gonna happen there, but I can point you to some public things, which tells us might be where Microsoft is going with this. And what it comes down to it though, is there's some some recent surveys, there's some recent studies that have shown that, that AI, artificial intelligence, in particular generative AI, I think GPT, is helping people be more productive in the workspace. And another aspect is that our, the data within the organization that we need to do to get our job is huge, intense, and the only way to get to it often is via search. And that is not always the best way because we wanna be able to like ask a broader question and we wanna be able to, in a sense, chat with our data and chat with, HR components and IT components without having to have another person on the other end for a lot of self-help stuff. And that could be kind of hard in older infrastructures and having a conversation with organizational data is really fascinating. That can be outrageously expensive to build on your own from scratch. Don't worry, there's this tool out there that Microsoft has been building for the last couple of years. It's been out for actually a couple of years uh, called uh, Power Virtual Agents, or you'll hear me now basically call it PVA. And although I expect a lot of new things to happen around AI with, within uh, PVAs, we wanna get the baseline knowledge of how they work. We can build them today. And as Microsoft continues to improve them, which I do think they're going to do, I think that's pretty obvious by uh, any public announcements they've already been making, it's worth getting started today if you haven't um, done that. And also the poll results were kind of awesome. It's great to see there are a few of you who have already pushed these out into the real world. Excellent, and a lot of you have interacted with them, but there was a fair amount that really haven't touched them. That's what this is all about. So that's why we're here. I'm looking forward to getting value out of understanding what PBAs are. I'm gonna spend basically the back half of this looking at it. We're gonna go into PBA, this won't be screenshots. We're actually gonna go into PVA, uh, the um, the authoring canvas within Teams, we'll do it within a web browser as well. well. We'll look at what makes a bot happen. We'll look at some of the things under the cover. I've got a really good open source project that Microsoft created that I found that most people haven't heard about yet. You can deploy it today into your tenant, into your environment. It helps you. It helps your users use Microsoft Teams actually, but you all on this call, it's gonna help you build amazing bots. So uh, stick with me till the end there. We got, I'm going to show what that is. We're also going to look at some of this, this public information out there. It is public. 
and we can read between the lines and i think you can see where ppas might be going um over the next week over the next month or over the next year or so so excellent yeah let's go ahead and, and get started I always like starting these at, at a baseline. I want to make sure that we are all on the same page. So what are PVAs? PVAs come down to it uh, as intelligent chatbots that you can build. Anybody, I believe anybody could build because there's no coding required. And I do an asterisk to that because you can add a lot of code to this, but you can create very sophisticated bots by basically dragging and dropping uh, 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 elements into a flow, into conversational flows. You don't need to know lots about like how AI works or how how you, you don't have to have every single possible iteration of how a question might be asked. You can help create what's called topics. We'll get into that. You help create what your bot can do. You can create different workflows. You can build different kinds of conversations. Um, and you can have different scenarios within the spot, all of no code, very much kind of like actually Power Automate if you used it. Um, and you can then meet your, your fellow employees your, or your customer needs. Now, BVAs can go public into public facing websites and stuff. I'm going to ignore that for the interest of this conversation, basically, because I want to look at teams and employees, but take what anything I'm really talking about and say, well, you could make it go public and you can build something for your, your public websites. All of this, though, is to help create a conversational system between a uh, a user and some sort of backend data, backend uh, information, backend topics and answers and things like that, with actually the ability uh, built into PVAs to escalate, to help you move a conversation actually to a live agent if needed. So just some really, really cool, powerful stuff. And, and oh, we're going to have some fun getting into it because, you know, I think what's important is where the rubber meets the road and how you build it. PVAs themselves are really for everybody. They're for your citizen developers. They're for your SMEs. The the and and not, this could be a SME that is um, technical or not technical. I mean, it's it really doesn't create a lot of you don't. There's not a lot of requirement for a lot of technical skill sets to build powerful bots. Uh, but if you wanted to get even more data, you can have professional developers not only building PVAs but also building backend infrastructure to help make PVA conversations even more powerful if you, if you wanted them to be. The general process to building a flow to me, uh, to building a PVA, excuse me, is very cyclical. It starts at the top. We're going to basically start at the top and, and go clockwise here that you are going to be building your bot and bots through uh, a GUID, through a, a graphical interface that Microsoft provides via Teams or via um, a web interface pretty easy to use. What you start doing, this is um, the, the the current way, the traditional way, shall I'm gonna say, the classic way maybe, that I expect to change, uh, and I'll get to actually in a second, but you start building these things called topics. You start building things that your bot can do because right now they're just, you know, we don't have, in a sense, GPT, well, even GPT can't do it. You can't just, expect a bot to be able to do everything within your org, such as, uh, you know, um, tell me how many days of vacation I have left and file an expense report. And uh, what is the latest Wi-Fi passcode? And uh, what are my holiday calendar looks like? And do we have this Thursday off uh, uh, or Friday off? A, a bot can't do that unless it's been trained, unless you teach it what it's able to do. That's, that's just the way we are right now. And so you have to build these starter topics um you can then take these topics you, you give it some structure and then neural language models come in to, to play here where the ai behind the scenes starts to understand what you're trying to do with this topic so that people don't have to interact with a given topic using only the phrasing you provided um the ai can help sort of figure out what a person's asking for then you can start to get a little crazy with this you can start integrating your bot with back into ais you can start teaching your bot different skills so they can actually do things. So you can actually not just provide an answer or provide some sort of response, but can actually ask you, oh, okay, I can see you would like to work with our, our internal traveling service. You need a flight to get to Seattle for a conference. Let me help you with that. That's a skill that a bot could be taught how to do. You can then publish this bot and then publish it to channels. Now, Microsoft nomenclature all fouled up. We know this. Uh, channels in bots are different than channels, say, in Teams or somewhere else. In a bot, a channel is a place where you would publish it. So publish it to Teams, publish it to a website, uh, publish it so it could be actually absorbed by another bot. It's a skill, really cool stuff there. Once you kind of get this bot out in the wild, internally, externally, you can then have some, you, there are some powerful monitoring tools that can help you build better bots. 
build a better bot. And there's some some really cool AI where you can that you can turn on where as conversations occur, the AI can help suggest topics for you to use. People are asking things that the bot doesn't know how to do yet. It can start monitoring that and going, oh hey, hey uh, subject automatic expert, hey SME, hey hey owner of this bot. This is something you may want to consider is teaching me how to do because people are asking that. Some really cool stuff now. Now on that last piece though, uh, you do need to consider that in order to get some of that AI to work, you need to record chat transcripts, which by default is turned off. Uh, for some organizations, it's a data privacy problem where a compliance issue where we don't want these conversations recorded. It's something that you'll need to think about. I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's just one of those things that you'll you'll need to dig out of the uh, the content if it's something that you want to turn on. Now I started this talking about how you create a bot and then you have to add topics. And I definitely want to see bots get to a spot where I turn on a bot and I basically can point it to something and basically say, I don't want to have to teach you. Here's your here's your data, here's your stuff. You go figure it out. You actually can do some of that today. Uh, I'm going to show you that where I'm going to point a bot to a, or I've already done it because it takes time for um, bots to learn. And I don't want to waste your time watching the computer just spin. So uh, I pointed a bot to a internal URL, an intranet, uh, and it's able to service that content with um, with security in mind. So it can actually go grab data where I have access to something and maybe someone else does, doesn't, and the AI can respond, the bot can respond by grabbing data from an intranet. But I, I do want to go beyond that. I mean, I would love to see more GPT stuff uh, enabled where I don't have to teach the bot nearly as much. I can basic kind of tell here's maybe a parameter of what the kind of thing that you should do here's some pointers but you go figure it out we're not there yet um i am excited to see what microsoft is going to announce in a few weeks and then at night and again i do have some some other uh public information that, that's public that kind of could tell us where things might be going from microsoft's perspective all right so the i'll do i'll try to get through the next couple slides really fast here uh you can always watch the recording, download this all stuff later. The thing about creating a strong customer experience and your customers could be your internal fellow employees uh, is like conveying convincing messaging. You've got all these different channels out there around information comes from. Um, it's hard to uh, reply to, re to request quickly. You know, so, you know, what's the Wi-Fi passcode? I need to get a new laptop. Um, my laptop is broken. Um, where's that content? I, I, I'm, I'm working remote today and I'm in a different time zone and I just need to find this and the person available is offline right now. Like, I, I don't want to wait for them. How can I go get this kind of stuff? Uh, we know there's a shortage of technical uh, skill sets out there. Things are improving super fast. And, and really when it comes down to it, there's just a limited, massive limitation on, on time, resource and budgets. And bots in particular here, PVAs can really help with that by helping provide a standard um, answers and links to and pointers to the documentation that exists so that I can have one central conversation and the data could be pulled from multiple areas and, and I can just have that conversation with that single source of truth basically. Um, PVAs can 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 integrate um, across all these different channels and PVAs conversations can help get answers anytime anywhere uh, for any given person. You point it to the right data, you have the right answers in it you don't necessarily need other people. And this is where I, I'm really looking forward to seeing some AI work out where some of the times the, converse, the the data within say Teams, within say SharePoint or OneDrive or whatnot is challenging for me to find. I don't always remember where things are or what it was. I'd like to have a conversation with something that can help go and grab data and can help refine it rather than me attempting to manipulate a search interface to do that. Um, yeah, so there's just so much that that bots can do to help with some of these shortcomings. Now there's some some key scenarios I want you to think about here. The core opportunities around bots are about having those those seamless uh, integrated conversations that where users can have conversations with with data, with with departments, with services, with feature sets, et cetera. Uh, anytime they they want to and need to, and they can get a lot of common questions. With actually something that could be deployed anywhere, I I am looking at PVAs in particular integrating with Teams, um, but we'll look at some channels thing and you'll see how that you can integrate it really anywhere. There's of course a business to con customer component I've talked about where it's that public facing website. I'm gonna skip that now and look more at the, the business to employee. So really common, common interfaces here. Some really common bots are, are streamlining HR aspects and also 
um, getting really FAQs where you don't have to build an FAQ where you've got a thousand questions that have the answers and then you're forcing me, the user, to wade through the thousand questions, uh, but building that sort of thing, but from a conversational view. And if you've already built sort of FAQ or you have questions and answers that are pretty common, you can point your bot basically to that. So now I can start to have a conversation with the data, with the FAQs, and um, the, the, the open source bot I'm going to show you that Microsoft created is actually that for Teams. It's pre-built. It's got some amazing announcements that, uh, that they've again publicly made that are coming here in November. And it's a bot that it's just, you're going to really like this thing if you haven't seen it yet. And I found very few people know about it, so I don't think a lot of you have heard about it. And um, it's something you may really want to consider deploying to your tenant right away because it's really useful out of the box. All right. Um, quickly here then, so like why PVAs? There's four primary components here I want us to think about around usability, productivity, extensibility, and scalability. So let's look at usability here first. Look, it's a no code graphical interface. No coding is required to get it going. There's all this natural language built into it, natural language capabilities built in where you don't have to know how to do that, super cool. This all allows you to basically take existing content and just reuse it into a conversational based interface. It can be deployed lots of places, but we're seeing this that, I mean, Microsoft has already announced that it's out there. There's a, a preview going on of Copilot within, within PVAs that's gonna make this so much more usable for the, for the author, for the owner of the bot. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of GPT and Copilot make its way into PPAs. I have nothing to announce. I actually don't know at all where Microsoft is truly going with that. I think we'll learn some at Ignite. Uh, but I think there's some interesting things around the AI that is integrated into PPAs already um, that you may want to look at and that you may want to consider. On the productivity side, look, this is a uh, this is a self-learning AI-enabled uh, um, and embedded uh, application. And so the self-learning aspect um, I talked about where the bot can start to understand what kind of topics might be useful to have to have it be taught, uh, which is super cool. And you can monitor the performance. You can see what people are doing, what they're asking to make your bot even better. And then that just helps people be more productive and all integrated in teams, which is really where so many of us work, just makes a lot of sense. On the extensibility side, so you wanna take this bot and you actually wanna go into more code. There's some really cool stuff here. So a whole bunch of connectors. So bots can already talk to a lot of aspects of your tenant, but it can talk to external services as well. Normally that costs more. You're gonna need different licensing and I'm not gonna get into licensing on this conversation. It's just a little too complex and beyond the scope of this, but it's out there, you can learn more about it. Um, but for the pro dev, oh yeah, you can really, extend this and really go places with it. And there's a cool piece where this can actually be handed off to Dynamics. Now this is more for the public facing site where you'd want um, you'd want someone who's on your public website asking questions about what is you're doing and you want to hand it off to Dynamics so a salesperson can help or a support person can help you there to, um, to augment that conversation. But you can do it internally as well. It makes a lot of sense. Someone's trying to interact with HR data or IT support data and they finally get stuck. They just need help. This can be handed off to um, uh, to, some, to something else. The one thing about licensing I will talk about is if you're a Microsoft 365 um, user or uh, you have the licensing, which I kind of think everyone on this call on this webinar most likely does have, you do get actually PVAs for free when you integrate your bot just with Teams and you're integrating with just M365 related data. Generally, don't quote me on everything. I'm sure you'll find some use case where I'm a little off on that. But if you're trying to talk to SharePoint, OneDrive, things like that, you can't. You're trying to talk to dynamics, you're trying to do that agent transfer. No, normally that will cost a little bit more uh, on the licensing side. So you'll want to work through with your with your Microsoft rep on that, or uh, just look at the licensing page around PVAs and you can learn more about that. Now, finally, on the scalability side, look, this is a, a software as a service. This is a SaaS offering for Microsoft. There's really no installation needed. It just is in and it works. You create bots, you go. Um, and you can reuse all the stuff that you build and it just scales with you. So super cool, amazing stuff. I wanted to talk a little bit about the AI behind the scenes. It's one of the things about integrating AI into your team's environment. That's the point of this, this webinar here. So look at all of the AI behind the scenes. And this is even before we really see Copilot come in. At the core of this, there's this natural language understanding model where you, you're able to, you're able to build these topics, these things that your bot can do 
you do give it some 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 trigger phrases some some things that people might say to to want to do to, to hit a specific topic to get some sort of specific answer or to interact with some sort of skill but when it comes down to it pvas by itself is attempting to understand what the user is actually typing and relate that to what you've taught your bot to do that's at its core beyond that other slips this chat transcript might need to help you figure out what's going on what are people asking for and what are some possible ways to improve your bot um there's a whole bunch of machine um, machine learning there's actually a bunch of machine, machine translation available under the hood as well um there's the um there's a whole thing around entities we haven't talked about it yet we'll see them the idea is is that when people are having a conversation you might want to pull certain things out of out of the out of the conversation out of a specific chat message and those are called entities think and there's a whole bunch of default ones out of the box that happen but think things like if you're asking someone what city are you coming from or something like that and someone were to type in a city you can actually pull out that as an entity of a city so that you could then use it in a skill to help support that user um, there's a whole bunch of pre-built ones there's custom ones that you can build pretty sophisticated stuff and, and generally there's a whole dialogue management ai model under the scene and this doesn't even include anything around Copilot. This doesn't include anything that Microsoft may or may not do around more like GPT and true uh, generative AI modeling and whatnot. So just a whole bunch of AI already there, effectively free for most of us, as long as we're integrating this really for our internal environments in within Teams. Okay, uh, very soon we're getting to, um, to the demo. So. Hang with me here. I've got just uh, I just want to talk about Copilot shortly. I want to talk about some some general uh, concept, some uh, use cases that you may want to consider, and then I'll demo from there. Okay, so uh, PVAs and Copilot. So what's been announced? What's out there? So it's in preview right now. It's um, yeah, this is the fourth quarter of 2023. Um, you, I don't remember the latest status on that and when it's going to come out. My thoughts here, I, I think we're going to see something bigger at Ignite in a few weeks around what Copilot's going to do for PVAs. I, I would think it will start to scale out like they've done on the M65 offering. I have nothing to share. I'm not telling you at all. I actually don't know. So um, I kind of sometimes want to be able to maintain my idea with Microsoft by sort of closing my ears when I, I kind of want to know because then I actually don't, I won't accidentally share something I shouldn't be sharing. Uh, but you know, publicly there is a co-pilot in PVAs right now. It's in preview. It's only available in the United States and in English as well. But what Microsoft has said that Copilot will do for helping work with bots is creating bots and creating uh, conversations so that you would type something in such as, and I'm, uh, I hate reading my slides, but I want to read this for it. You would type in, in Copilot, collect a user's name, email address, and phone number, ask up to three times, and once the data is collected, summarize the data collected in an adaptive card. The idea is there, you type that into Copilot, Copilot will now build that skill as set with all of the different actions you've asked for. Pretty cool. Something maybe like create a help desk bot with 10 common HR related topics. You know, that would be something I would expect Copilot to be able to do uh, so that I get I, I get started somewhere. It helps me get something I can build. And, and what we've seen with Copilot is when Copilot does this, it's not gonna do some like secret magic that, that you now can't touch. It's gonna build you something that you now can completely 100% change, delete, remove, edit. It's gonna use the exact same interface. Uh, the output will use the same interface that you'd use to build the bot. It's just gonna help accelerate that. But then you can also edit existing bots and the examples they give are like, you know, add an adaptive card that summarizes the data collected on a user. So if you're asking in a skill set what a user is trying to do, you could then, instead of trying to figure out how to build the bot, the adaptive card summary yourself, you can just ask the bot to do, ask PVA, ask Copilot with the PVAs to do that and it will create that action for you. So pretty cool stuff. Lastly, before we go into the demo, I want to like, you know, give you the, the screenshot of, here's some of the things I think of and that some of our clients are asking for and, and people have been talking to me about, about when they said they built PVA bots, what, what do they look like? To me, and this is sort of my ordering based on where I see high value, um, high, um, high, high, high ROI, and very common. So surfacing your knowledge base, like that's the easy ones, the no-brainers. If you're trying to get started building these, this one makes total sense. Surfacing the knowledge base of data you have, but allow it to be conversational. That's cool. Having list of common questions that people are asking within a certain thing, say, say around HR or IT support or, or things like that. Um, 
company policies and like access to maybe the employee handbooks and stuff, or you're pointing your bots to that information and now you can easily pull the data out in a conversation. I, I've seen a really powerful bot around onboarding guidance. So this would be for all the, the as you're onboarding new employees, you have a bot just for them that helps answer a lot of their common questions in a, in a conversation base. Actually troubleshooting, pass reset management. I mean, these are so common and to, to pull all this stuff out of the convoluted systems we've had or having to talk to somebody, oh, like totally huge. Um, training and development, oh yeah. I mean, being able to have a conversation about where I can go find this kind of information and, and uh, what does our organization have around training and whatnot. Safety procedures and reporting is another one, like a safety bot or whatnot. How am I supposed to do things related to reporting a, uh, an issue or concern that I see? Feedback and suggestions. So instead of having a Microsoft form or something like that, you can have a bot all built around helping um, in conversational base, helping get feedback uh, out of your out of your fellow workers. Um, time seat submission. Oh, you mean even an expense report? You can build some really sophisticated skills. Of course, there are more. So it's not comprehensive. This is just a list of things I've seen that are that are useful uh, that I want you to consider. You know, hopefully you'll uh, you'll think about building your next bot might be uh, something on this list. And if you're new, I would start at the top and see what you could do to help drive ROI for your organization um, to help build bots that will make sense. So with that, I want to get into some demos. I want to see all this. So let, let's let's go ahead and do that. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Here's how I'm going to do this whole thing. So I'm going to start in uh, uh, Microsoft Teams here. Let me make sure everything is still being shared the way I want. Perfect. It is. I'm going to start my Microsoft Teams now. It says I'm in PVAs. You can you can ignore that aspect. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my three little dots, and you either have PVAs uh, available, so Power Virtual Agents. So it's right it's right here. If you don't have this, you can go to the App Store, and and it's available by default unless your tenant has turned it off. But you should be able to add this app uh, really without any problems. If you have problems, just talk to your uh, your IT folks and just find out like why it's not available and whatnot. Once you go into to PDAs, they, there's some cool getting started stuff, but what you're really wanting to do is go into the chatbots. Now with the chatbots, what happens here is you now see the chatbots that you've created um, or the ones that have been shared with you. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to quickly create a chatbot from here just to quickly show you what it is. But the thing is, I, I'm not going to go through the whole process right here. Because the problem is it takes too long to get the chatbot actually provisioned. So I'm going to do this. And then we're going to go look at a chatbot I've already created that I haven't really touched at all. So you can see basically the same output. When you create a PVA within Teams, it needs to be tied to a team. That's just the way the PVAs work. So one of the first questions that's asked is, which team do you want this associated with? And so you pick the team that you want associated with. Now, that doesn't mean the PVA can only live within that team. It's just, that's where it's tied to. You can then publish it out so that it can be added as its own standalone app actually, um, or it can be added into um, another spot as needed. So really what's important here is you give it a name. Like that, that's really it. Uh, you hit create and it's gonna get created for you. Seriously, that simple. It just takes a few minutes for the whole thing to get provisioned. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on an existing PVA that I've already created. This is the way that we can now see the interface and I can now work through the different tabs so we can understand how this whole thing is built. So creating a PVA is just really simple, just, just simple. There's a couple of things you're going to notice right off the bat. On the left-hand side, there's a whole navigation for you. Uh, in the middle, you would have your, your test bot. If you accidentally closed the, the, the ability to test your bot, it's always available at the bottom here. Um, I like keeping that open because I'm obviously often working with the bot as I'm building it. And the other thing I like to do is I like to turn this on, this track between, between topics. What that does is it basically, to me, it's a little misnamed, but as I have my conversation, it, it actually helps debug the, the chat that I'm having. The first thing you end up doing is you end up creating topics. So um, what you're seeing, by the way, is, is basically out of the box when you create a bot from scratch, this is what you're gonna get. And all of this that you see here is, is customizable. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and like I could create a new topic. So I can create a new topic from blank. And basically it's gonna ask me to, to, to get started with it and ask trigger phrases. And so the idea is here is, 
you're asking, you're, you're telling this, this topic, how might someone interact with this specific, not the bot, a specific thing that you may want the bot to be able to do, to be able to answer a question or to be able to, to get data from somebody and to go use it or something like that. The, you work through it and you're gonna start building the flow. Now I have found the easiest way to show this is actually to look at one of the topics that are being created for us. You can see all of these created have already been created. So let's just go to, to lesson two and let's see what this is and let's see how this works. It looks like a flow. So it has trigger phrases. So there's these example phrases someone may ask, but that this is not the only way that someone might interact with this topic. Once you have those trigger phrases, you can then have actions, such as a message. I'd be glad to help you. Maybe you ask another question. So you have a question. So you would say, what is it? You might give users, uh, uh, excuse me, options that a user could reply with. You can have massive decision trees. Based on what they do, you might do different things, and then you might end that conversation. Okay, so let's kind of interact with this. So a store near me. So let's test this and say what is a store near me this is something may, someone might ask and you can actually see so what happened is it, it gave you the response oh, i'd be glad to help you that was what we saw it then asked a question but see what happens on the right it's actually showing me where i am in in the topic that was triggered by the phrase that i asked which is just super cool and so i can see exactly what's going on i can say seattle it went through the the decision tree uh, it gave me an address and did this answer your question, which is basically feedback. Yes, it did. And, and you know, it goes through a whole, whole setup. So creating topics is all about setting up some, some trigger phrases, some things that someone may use to try to interact with this. And then you can build a whole flow as to what's happening. Your first bot might just be questions and answers. So you create a bunch of topics around answers that may exist. You create a couple of samples uh, as to how someone may interact with that. You train your bot and you've now got a bot that can now uh, help answer people's questions. That's actually the bot that I'm going to give you for free that Microsoft created, totally open source, very cool stuff. So in interest in time, I'm going to move on because topics can get pretty cool and crazy. And, and I, my nirvana is going to be, I don't want to have to build topics anymore. We are kind of there. We'll show that in a little bit, but, but not quite, you know, there's still a lot to do. So entities. I'm not going to go too much into detail in the entities, but an entity is basically uh, ways to pull out information uh, within a specific conversation. So you can see what they look like. So age, Boolean, city, color, uh, in these, the duration of email, whatever. So these are things that that can be that the bot can be taught to do. And then when you build a topic and you're building that response, you're actually able to say, hey, look, I'm expecting these entities to be pulled out from the response someone may give me, and then you could use that entity uh, to, to, to further that conversation, to store things, to help get the, the user what it is they're looking to do. So entities can be very complex, by the way, but there's a whole bunch of pre-built ones. You can learn all about them by just basically understanding, by, by looking at the responses that are, uh, by looking at the entities that were created for you out of the box. That's again, well, that's how I learn. I just find examples are so helpful and useful. Um, so there's a whole bunch of pre-built ones. Analytics, uh, this bot doesn't have too much in it. It's just a demo bot, but you can start to get a summary of conversations. You can see the different topics that have been called up, the customer satisfaction. You can get a whole bunch of stuff on sessions that were built, uh, sessions that have happened and conversations that have occurred and building. Um, eventually that will load. Again, interesting time, I'm gonna move forward. In order for a bot to actually be usable, you need to publish it. So if you go ahead and click on publish, you can publish the bot. So what happens is, when you are building out your topics, your entities uh, and whatnot, you're changing workflows, you add a new topic, you change triggers, phrases, whatever, none of the things that you've done will get used in, in the bot until you publish it. So you have to constantly republish it as you make changes. Um, but what you do, you just click on the publish button and then you can also help push this out uh, to different areas, to different channels. By default, the way this is built, it's easy to get into Teams but you can actually publish this to other channels if you wanted to. Okay, um, on settings, a few things I wanna go to is around channels. So channels, you can see there's a whole bunch of places you can actually publish this to. All of these will cost you more money more likely, except for Teams. So Teams would be including your entity drive license. Uh, there is a whole thing around agent transfers. I talked about that where when you want, if, if you want your bot to be able to help send this conversation to a person, 
There's a whole component around that. There's a whole piece around security. Uh, the one that's really important is around authentication. So by default, a bot that you could create is going to have no authentication. So it just it's it'd be like a public facing bot. Normally, you don't want that. You're going to need authentication for Teams at least because now you've authenticated the user. You know who they are. It's trusted. That way, you can actually start extending your bot to do more things um, based around the context of who the user is. Think like, would you want everyone to have full access to your internet? No. In fact, you don't even want everyone in your org just to have access to your internet. You want them to have access to the data and internet based on who they are so that you can use security trimming to pull out the right information. So there's a whole thing around authentication. Um, there's a whole component around skills. I'm not going to get into that in too much, but this is where you can have bots actually call other bots to help improve the skills that your bot can do. So, so actions your bot can take, like think GPT. GPT itself is, I like to say it's dumb. It, it doesn't do any chat GPT. It, it doesn't do anything. It just, it, it attempts to create a, a high probability response to what you've asked, what you've typed in, the prompt that you've given it. It can't do anything. Um, it can be extended to do something. PVAs are the same thing. Like by default, it doesn't do anything. And, and it tells only what you tell it to do. But you can actually give it more skills where it can call other bots too, to be able to do some even more cool stuff. So very sophisticated. The last piece is around AI capabilities that are turned off by default. So some of the ones I really like here are topic suggestions and uh, conversational uh, conversation personalization. The one I really like is, is topic suggestions. So as my bot is running and it's being used, I would like AI to help figure out what it is that it's, it's, it's going to do. So when this happens, uh, so when you actually build this whole thing out and you click on publish and whatnot, uh, what you can then do is your bot can then be used as a standalone bot so you kind of see i've had some just test conversations um a little while back but uh, can you help me find a store let's see if it, if it figures that out oh yeah so it uh, it couldn't quite figure out what it did and of course i tried to misspell something sort of on purpose and so i know these topics are not named very well yes you'd want to change all this stuff we happen to know that i think it's lesson two i'm pretty sure is the store one um, and you can then trigger that out so that it actually goes to that conversation. So the conversation just happens in Teams like you would expect. Okay, that's your dime tour of Teams, of, of uh, PBAs and Teams. I, I don't worry, it's got a lot more I really want to show you. The next thing I want to show you is around actually integrating your, or working with your PBAs in a little more sophisticated uh, environment. And that's actually over at uh, Power VA, uh, you know, Power Virtual Agents, PowerVA.Microsoft.com. If you go there, and you log in using the same tenant account as you used over in Teams, you, you get basically the same thing, just a little more power here. One of the things that you need to set up though, or the things you'll need to do is when you're at the PVA web interface, not the Teams interface, you need to tell it what environment you're working on. And when it comes down to it, when you created a, a bot in Teams, in PVA Teams, it asked you what team do you want to tie to, that was creating an environment for you to use. So what you can see here is I have a bunch of these, these different teams that I've created, really only two, and it automatically created an environment. So if I go to the, the Timon support team, because that was the team that I actually have already in there, that I actually was, uh, that was the team that I created my bot in. If we go to chat bots, you'll see the same two bots that I have. And this IT support is the exact same bot that I was using. And it effectively has really all the same features. So same topics, it looks exactly the same, the same test. Um, it has basically the same settings. I go into AI even, like it, it's the same, it's the same thing. It's not like a copy or anything. It's literally the same thing. It's just that the Teams app pointed to that. If you create a bot outside of PVAs and Teams, so you create uh, just a bot in uh, PowerVA.com, you get something a little different. All right. so. Let's go ahead and let's go to this, this Contoso uh, environment where I created a, a, a default bot once this loads up. And now if you, if you kind of think through, as long as PVAs has the bot, you can publish it into Teams. It's just that the Teams app of PVAs is trying to make it a little easier for you because it's all within Teams. You want a little bit more power though, check this one out. So I created this, this bot here and um, I created it within Power VA and that allowed me to give a little more superpowers Let's go into settings and now check this out. I have a little more AI behind it. 
Let's go to AI capabilities. And this is very different. Here, what I've done, and this takes time. That's why I'm not setting it up. Uh, I'm not setting it up for you because I've already done it. It just takes time to go get all the data and it takes time for the bot to learn. I've pointed this bot to my intranet. Once in my intranet, I can then use generative answers. And, and basically what happens is, let's go to the topics and look at the topics that are here. Pretty basic topics, not too much going on here. So let's go ahead and say, um, what is the Mark 8 project? Okay, well, if you kind of look at the different the topics that exist and whatnot, you kind of see there's really nothing like that there. So if I click on this, now this this has been a little flaky for me. This doesn't always work, but it should work. Um, hopefully it will work. What's happening here is it's it doesn't know what I'm trying to do. And so it's going to go out and it's going to, perfect. It's going to go out to that extra site that I provided. And it's basically going to go run a search there. And it's going to go pull back data I have access to. And it's going to give a generative answer think ChatGPT, and even better, it's going to quote where it got the data from. So it's authoritative, right? Because if you all know ChatGPT, hallucinate, make stuff up. Like you ask it when Queen Elizabeth died on ChatGPT 3.5 and it says she's alive and well. I don't, you know, that's because that's based on the data that, that it was trained on. Here though, it actually says where it got this generative answer from. And on the right-hand side, we can actually see what happened, how the bot did it. And what it basically said is unknown intent, so creating a generative answer, because I set it all up, it went and it looked where it looked for, and it, it worked. That's cool. Like, to me, that's just, that's really awesome. Okay, so then let's go ahead and let's look at our channels, and we can see, we still can publish this out to Teams, just as we normally would. And um, I think I did set this up properly. So if we come over here, and we go to PBA, we can see that my bot is in fact available here in Teams. Now, there's a whole component around getting teams, uh, getting your bots into teams to get them work correctly on that. A little beyond this, uh, the a little beyond what I can say in this specific conversation, but hopefully this helps give you some ideas of, of um, what you can do to make these PVA work. The documentation is out there, really pretty easy. Okay, I know there's some questions coming in. Give me a few more seconds. I'm almost done with the primary demos. We'll get your questions and we'll 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 dig in from there. Um, so the next thing I want to do. So this is kind of my I like to say it's a it's a big reveal, and it's totally not. Uh, AK.ms slash um, Tim on. Everyone uh, listening to this, you must know this. You must check this out. Super important. AKA.ms slash Tim on. Uh, it's supposed to be like Team on. And what you're going to find if you go here is it's a big sway. Um, this is an open source project by Microsoft. That's a it's it's for team on that's where it is and so Tima by the way that's Swedish the guy that created this uh, the primary author of this um, he's a Swedish American and so that's kind of where he he built it from and and here's like this big thing I want you to see at which is right here coming soon AI update November 2023 what's happening in 2023 so I have no idea exactly what what the AI update is going to be but. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so so what is this though? What's this bot? Um, th that sway is going to point you to a GitHub project. You can just Google Tim on Teams GitHub. You'll get here. Uh, basically, this is a open source bot that you can install into your environment. It takes about a half hour to forty minutes, uh, thirty to sixty minutes to install. It's not overly hard. Follow the instructions. They tell you exactly in the deployment guide how to do it. Uh, there's some really cool stuff that you can do. Uh, but what it comes down to is this bot has over 100 common Teams questions to help your users use Teams. Okay, so let's very quickly go look at it um, and how this works. So so you can kind of see uh, some of what it is. Um, let's see, uh, what is chips? So, um, it's a basically a Q&A for teams to teach you how to use, use use teams and whatnot. That's great. Like out of the box, this is going to be great for your organization. Just it is. You install it. You now have a bot that can help people use teams. Cool. Okay. But let's go ahead and quickly look at, uh, let's go to PVA 
we'll go look at the, the bot. Um, I'm going to only show you the, the basics of it because I want to, well, I, I'm a nerd. I, I, I get it. Like I, I get totally geeked out on this kind of stuff. But I just think it's super cool because then it can help me help my users, help my clients, help whoever um, get started. So if we go to Tim on, we go to topics, check out all of these topics they created for you out of the box that you can go and customize. What is SharePoint? Of course, cool. I'm a SharePoint person. So there's all these trigger phrases built. It has a whole message. It does different responses. It like, you know, it helps you build, it helps you see what a good conversation should look like, a good topic should, could look like, but it also is just straight up useful. Like it's a good bot. It just helps you do things. Um, oh, here's another one that I thought was really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go back to topics. Check out Escalate. So Escalate, lots of different phrases people might use to escalate, but if you start looking down this, it start, it, it's, it, it's a whole flow of how you might help somebody escalate a conversation what's happening here is and this takes a little time to set up it's part of the whole instructions there's nothing you just follow the instructions it basically is going to end up if you keep going down here it is triggering a flow that will post a message to teams agent transfer to live user is not freely available that so they didn't want to do that but this is talking to a, a power automate bot totally is free it's it's all set up easy to do and like, if you want to build a bot that can post to a Teams message easily, go get Tim on. Don't even use it if you don't want, but look at it. It's going to teach you right away how to go build a, a, a pretty sophisticated topic to be able to go and um, do some cool stuff. And if in November 2023, which is effectively now, we're going to get some AI updates to this whole thing. Oh, yeah, this, this is my go-to spot for anybody who wants to get uh, started with, with um with bots, this is like a great project to just, once you've got it installed, you can delete all the topics, start over, you know, like turn all the topics off, create new ones, rebuild them, rename them, create new trigger phrases. Like you can just really go wild with this. Last thing I wanna show you, um, they're really, whoops. I don't know if that audio worked for you, it just blew up in my ear. Uh, there is a, a Power Virtual Agent channel um, over uh, the, in YouTube that Microsoft maintains, just Google. Uh, Microsoft Power Virtual Agents uh, YouTube, and you, you should just get this. It's at Power Virtual Microsoft Power Virtual Agents as well. They have a lot of really good material on how to do all the stuff I talked about in great detail. So if you really want to learn how to get started, to me, this is absolutely um, the right way. So uh, yeah, uh, that's kind of like my quick dime tour of the whole thing. Um, let's see. Eric, uh, do you want, want to answer a couple of these questions real quick, Eric? I would love to, absolutely. Uh, all right, starting at the top. Is there a text-based equivalent to the UI builder, uh, YAML slash JSON or some such? Is there more of a, like a deep code or a coding way to, to build your bots since like JSON or YAML or something um, uh, to do it? Uh, yeah, uh, there is, there is, because it's the way, and, and one of the ways that I would uh, really look at getting started with something like that is if you go into um, the bot here, and I now, I've, I forgot where I put the whole thing, I think in languages, which, um, the way that the bot is exported, um, so that it could be imported, so here's the um, the the bot itself. It's it's basically it's a big manifest. Uh, it, it's pretty ugly. Oh yeah, it's not going to allow me to uh, quickly dig into it. So so yeah. Um, so you can actually put um, uh, like code control behind all of this or version control behind all of it, like you can a lot of the rest of the Power Platform. It's not normally how we use it, just because it's a little uh, a little more challenging, um, but Yes, beyond the scope of this call, because it's actually pretty advanced. Um, but yes, and you can use it to help with virtual control. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, next was a comment. Just I was following in our own tenant and noticed generative AI. Yeah. Um, good that you noticed that. Um, and then the next, another question. In a large-ish corporate environment where I am not an admin, what level of permissions do I need to be able to develop and test TVA-constructed bots? Very little for a lot of pieces of it. Okay, so if you want to add it to a team, if you're in Teams, you're in PVA. So let's go back to Teams. Let's go back to PVA. There's a, there's a a couple of steps 
to this to that question. Okay, so the first one is, do you need power virtual agents to be available? You know, your tenant can turn that off. Like they can not allow you to do that. They can remove it from the app store so that you can't even install it. So you would need to make sure the PBA is available to you that you may not have access to. So you need to make sure it's available. Once it's available, once you can then use it, once you get into here, really what I have found is that when you go ahead and you add a, um, a chat bot to a team, you have to be an owner of the team because you have to be able to, 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 to manipulate a little more. So you have to just be able to own two different teams. From there, not much. Okay, so because your, your bot can now be, able to be available within the, the team itself. Um, where you can get stuck is if you then want to publish your, your app to broader teams, because you can actually make it so that anybody can use it anywhere, in particular here on the left-hand side. So you can see where I have it listed here in IT support. And when I click on it, it's, I mean, it's effectively, it's an app. It's an app with, within, within Teams. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's in my left bar. Um, you can actually extend that so anybody can add it. In fact, you can even add it where the administrator, the, the owner of Teams can go into manage apps. They can then take this app that is published out to Teams that you would need access to be able to publish it into the team, to your local team store. The administrator could then actually pin this to people's left bar so everyone saw it. Um, you can create different audiences within Teams. I think like an onboarding audience for, for people when they first get started with your organization and the left bar looked a certain way and the app was pinned for because it was the onboarding app. So you can create simple, assuming you have the access to PVAs to begin with, you can create simple bots just by really owning Teams. If you want to extend it out so that it's available to anyone within Teams and they can add it to their own, they can add it as an app outside of your, with outside of the team itself, you would need to have a little more access within the Teams environment to be able to, to do that publishing. So um, kind of a long answer, but hopefully that helped get you started. Anyone on this call, as long as you have access to PVA and you, you own a team, you should be able to create a PVA now to at least develop and test and play with and see how they all work uh, without actually publishing it out to everybody so that you know only you see it for now. Um, you shouldn't run into really any problems with it. Unless your org is full on shut it down, of course. Excellent. That was the end of those questions. Okay. Well, we're basically out of time. So this is actually really good. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and let's end this up. Uh, let's go back to here. Let's go back to here. Uh, so yeah, that was the demo. We've got a bunch of resources. Um, so Michael, I'm basically going to hand this over to you because I know we've got resources. A lot of the links that I uh, just went through, I know is included. Uh, and then we'll just wrap up with our, our giveaway and some thank yous. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm ready. Let's roll. Thank you so much, Eric. Wonderful look at, at Power Virtual Agents. Thank you for deep diving into that. Um, Eric mentioned resources. There is a little handout I just dropped in the handouts uh, tab or section. Feel free to grab that. Um, that's, like as Eric mentioned, a lot of the links that he used, a lot of the stuff he talked about today. It's a nice little uh, one pager, so to speak, of all that stuff if you want to look in more into that. Um, and as always, we uh, we do our webinar survey giveaway. I mentioned that survey that survey, excuse me, in the beginning. Um, if you follow the link or the QR code, it'll take you to a quick survey just about our webinar series and uh, today's webinar specifically. Let us know what you thought. Let us know um, if you thought we could have gone even deeper in Power Virtual Agents. Um, maybe we needed to focus on one area more than the other. Maybe we needed to provide more snacks. Let us know what you think about our webinar series. We'd love to to hear your feedback. We are a culture of constant improvement. We want to make sure we're giving you guys the best product possible. We also are always interested to hear what people want to want to hear about in our in our in our series. You know, is there a topic that you think, oh man, I would love to hear Eric or Rez or any of our usual uh, speakers talk about or a roundtable and all that. You know, we we like to do those as well. Let us know what you're thinking. We'd love to do that. And if you fill out that survey, you are entered to win a fifty dollar Amazon gift card. We do do the drawings quarterly. I believe our next one will be in January or February of next year. So. Uh, Enter now, you could be the big winner next uh, next time we do one of those drawings. Um, and with that, I think that's that's really all we've got for now, folks. Um, if you have any other questions, please, uh, last minute questions, throw them on up in the questions area. Looks like there weren't any more that came in. Um, so we've still got a minute. So if you have any other burning questions about our virtual agents, uh, we can answer those for you. We do also do a bigger deep dive. And obviously this was a quick um, sort of quick and dirty, like hour long session about the, base, the basics and, and get that that good understanding of what PVA is. We do an all day session on Power Virtual Agents called, uh, called PVA in a Day. 
Um, they're all day sessions that we do on Wednesdays. Um, not every Wednesday. Um, we do a lot of in-a-day sessions, but we do a specific one on Power Virtual Agents. If you want to deep dive a little farther into, into what we were able to get to today, we'd love to have you on there as well. Yeah, uh, I'm not seeing any more questions, too. but then... Yeah, very hands-on, a lot of a lot of hands-on learning. Uh, the, the bigger group of our team, um, you know, two or three folks uh, who, who sit with you throughout the day and work with you through how to create them and all that stuff. And, and yeah, so with that, we are at time. I didn't see any more questions come in. So everyone, thank you so much as always for joining us. This is the last session for 2023. Thank you so much for joining us. We are busy, busy, busy planning our sessions for 2024. We're very excited. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for uh, for helping us complete out the seventh year of the Pixma webinar series. This, yeah. is, this is the completion of our seventh year, uh, and so I just I'm so excited to to have met everyone who's been on it. Eric, of course, you are the uh, the um, the most uh, spoken person, the, the the person who's done the most session. So I appreciate you doing that. And just everyone, thank you so much for being a part of this series. We're we're so happy to have you all each and every month at the end of the month or in this case, the beginning of the month, um, you know, yeah. holidays being what they are. But with that, I'm going to stop talking. Thank you so much, everybody, for Thank joining us all. today. Have a great rest of your day, week, month, year, and we will see you all in 2024. Take it easy, everybody. Bye, all.